Let's go. I don't know what you're going through, but we stopped by to tell you that what's in front of you is bigger than what's behind you. Your destiny, your promise, your future. You might as well shout before you get it, because God sent me here to tell you that what he has for you is going to be big. That it's my season. That it's my season. You ought to declare that over your own life. Say, I believe. I believe. That it's my time. That it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. And I can feel it. <laughs> Say, breakthroughs in the room. Breakthroughs in the room. It's yours if you want it. Anticipating. Anticipating. God's getting ready to move. God's getting ready to move. Listen, you ought to declare this over your own life. Say it. God, he's working a miracle just for me. And it's going to be. Hey, listen, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about my future. Why? It's going to be big. Shouting into my promise. Why? God's gonna. has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, I'm so excited about what God is doing in his kingdom. It's going to be big, y'all. God is blessing us right now. He keeps on blessing us, as a matter of fact. Listen, listen, listen. Before I get into this word uh, that I'm so excited to share with you today, uh, let me just uh, tell you again, if you want to know more about uh, Riverview Community Church, The View, uh, please visit our website at www.rcctheview.org. If you got a prayer request, please email your prayer request to contact us or contact at rcctheview.org. To sow a seed into this ministry, uh, you, you may use Cash App. Uh, that's a dollar sign, RCC The View. Or you may mail your gift to P.O. Box 613163. Listen, again, again, I'm excited. I'm so excited. Now that I've got preliminaries out of the way, I'm so excited about what God is doing and what he is uh, allowing uh, me to be a part of in this season. It's a brand new season. And I don't care what we're going through. I don't care what you're going through. I want you to know that God is still good. He's still good to us. And so uh, won't you join me in the word of prayer as we pray again for 
uh, those who are going through this pandemic, who are mourning those who uh, they've lost, those who've lost jobs, those who have uh, encountered all kinds of difficulties in this season. Um, as we elect a new president, our goal, again, our goal, we have a responsibility to go and to vote, 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 vote. I can't say it enough, vote, vote, vote. Go and make your voice heard. Go and share. Uh, pull that, that level. Push that button. Make sure, again, that you take responsibility uh, that has been given to you by our God and by those who have shed their blood and have been beaten uh, to give us this right to be able to participate and to elect those who we place into office. Uh, we need new leadership. Go and vote. Do your part. Do your part. Let's pray. God, we thank you again for your faithfulness. We thank you again for how you love us, God. We thank you again for bringing us uh, thus far along the way. God, we thank you again that uh, you have never, ever left us nor forsaken us. And we give you glory and honor. We, we lift up your name today in the earth. For we know, again, you are worthy to be praised. We thank you for how you brought us through the last week, God, and how you allowed us uh, to remain in good health and in our right minds. And so, God, we thank you for how you, again, just keep on showing up and showing out in our lives. God, we ask you right now to bless those who are sick and those who are bereaved and those who are broken and those who are tired. God, I pray right now that you heal their bodies, God, that you deliver them, that you give them the strength that they need right now. God, for that person that's going through financial difficulties right now, help them to hold on. Help them, to again, to remain faithful to you and watch you, God, again, bring them out again. God, I thank you right now. Thank you for, for what you're doing in Riverview Community Church, God. God, I see you doing great things. I see you doing big things. God, I ask you right now, allow the vision to go forth, God, and allow it to catch uh, the hearts in the minds of your people. God, wherever they are serving, wherever they are ministering, God, I pray right now that your word would go forth today, that lives will be changed, hearts will be touched, and people again will come to know you in the pardon of their sins. Bless us right now. Bless us as we get into this word. Help us again to take it into our ears and our hearts and then to apply it, God, in our lives. Again, we give you glory. We lift up your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Listen, listen. Go with me uh, to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 17. I uh, am beginning... Uh, a sermon series called Can You See It? Listen, uh, I actually started it on our third Saturday worship experience, uh, which is on our YouTube uh, video channel. As a matter of fact, you can watch that as well just to get the beginning of this sermon series. But I'm going to continue this for the rest of the month talking about can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? God wants us to be able to see what he is doing in the earth, in his kingdom. Listen, this is what uh, Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 17 says. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I them in parables, because they seeing see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. 
And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, by hearing you shall hear, and you shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they shall see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand uh, with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Word of God for the people. Listen, can you see it? Can you see it? My dad lived until he, he was nearly 93 years old. I watched him uh, in his latter years as his eyes dimmed and his sight worsened. Uh, he would read. magnifier. And that's what I want to talk about today, uh, the magnifying glass, the magnifier. I, I don't know if you've ever used a magnifying glass uh, or if you know how it works, uh, but a magnifying glass does several things. Look bigger, thus making it easier to examine and see. It also brings the object into greater focus enabling those of us with low vision who are visually impaired to see details we would not be able to see uh, without the magnification uh, the glass is performing. Today, we live in a world that is chaotic, a world that is convoluted, uh, in a world where it's hard to see. It's difficult to see uh, through all of the evil the wickedness, the hate, the sickness, the death, the crime, injustices, racism, police brutality, bullying, darkness, and smallness in our world. No matter what continent you're on, no matter what country, nor state, county, city, town, hamlet, or village you live in, right now it's hard to see. 2020 has been a rough year, a difficult year, a turbulent year. Old folks used to say a topsy-turvy kind of year that we won't forget. We need a magnifier to make it easier to see, to make it easier to examine and to figure things out. We need a magnifier to help us put in focus things around us uh, that are fuzzy and cloudy. Uh, we need a magnifier to help us to see uh, things bigger and clearer. In case you think I'm still talking about a magnifying glass, allow me to clarify. We need a magnifier by the name of Jesus. We need him so that we may see clearly in this dark world. Jesus, Jesus magnifies the small, the rejected. Uh, he magnifies the marginalized, the have-nots, and nobodies of the world. He magnifies the downtrodden, the forgotten, and those overlooked in our communities. My mama used to say, he will be your company keeper, your way out, your way in, your way out of no way. Yeah, Jesus is our magnifier. In our text, Jesus is asked by his disciples, 
Why do you tell parables and stories? A parable <coughs> is a story that gives real life emphasis to the point that Jesus was trying to make. And because he is the master teacher, he chose scenes, incidents, and objects with which uh, the people were familiar uh, and thus would heighten the effect of the story that he was, or the point that he was trying to make. His ultimate purpose in telling parables was to illuminate uh, human minds and human hearts, to soften and to save, not to harden, not to darken and not to destroy, but to soften and to save humankind. And so Jesus answered them. He says, to give you insight, that's why. I'm trying to uh, use these parables and these stories to give you insight into God's kingdom and how it works. He says, it's not only uh, for the people, but it's for you. It's for you. It's not just for the world, but it's for the believer to get a clear understanding of what I'm trying to do. He says, as a matter of fact, uh, he, he, says, he says, I'm trying to explain that Everyone uh, who has eyes don't see. Everyone that uh, doesn't get this gift, only the believers and those who have a heart that is ready to receive him can see and hear what God is doing. Jesus says, I don't want what, what happened in Isaiah's day to happen again. That is that the people had eyes but could not see they had ears, but could not hear. Uh, he says, as a matter of fact, uh, they were given a chance, but chose rather to close their eyes and to stop up their ears so they would not have to deal with the kingdom of God. Today, our, our world is filled with many who are like this. They know the Bible has the answer to their problems and their situations, but they would rather remain ignorant and blind and dumb than to come to Jesus. They use all kinds of excuses. Uh, they blame other creatures of clay. They refuse to take advantage of the grace and mercies of God. And so Jesus tells the disciples, but God has blessed you to see and to hear. God has blessed you to see and to hear. In this season of chaos, confusion, and pandemic, God is providing his people with eyes to see and ears to hear. In spite of the way things look, the true people of God recognize that God is up to something. He's not asleep, but he is working things out for our good. Oh, my brothers and sisters, open up your eyes. Allow Jesus, our magnifier, to do something for you in this new season. Can I give you a few things that he wants to do? He wants you to see in this new season. First, he wants you to see your purpose. I call this enlightened. He wants to enlighten you. He wants you to see your purpose. No human other than Jesus has lived up to his or her full potential. Paul tells us in Romans 3.23 that because of sin, we all have come short of the glory of God. In other words, our sin problem has caused us to be less than God desires for us to be. It's unfortunate that too many of us stop right there. And we think God will never use someone who has fallen short like us. We sell ourselves short. We begin to doubt and to think uh, that we can't do what God uh, has or is calling us to do. We begin to operate with a grasshopper mentality that causes us to lose before we begin the battle. I'll say that one more time. We, we begin to operate uh, with a grasshopper mentality that causes us to lose before we begin the battle. Listen here, child of God. God wants you to know 
uh, that when Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected from the grave, it granted us a pardon and covered every one of us, uh, uh, one of our sins rather, uh, in the past and in the present and in the future with his blood. Oh, I'll say that one more time. Everything that we have done, all of our sins, the past, the present, and the future are covered by the blood of Jesus. And so when God sees us, he doesn't see us in our mess. He doesn't see us in our brokenness. God sees us in the blood of Jesus. He sees the new man. He sees the new woman. The wonderful change he sees that has happened in our lives, that's what he sees. And God wants you to see it too. He wants you to see it too. God, is, God isn't looking for you to be perfect. He's not looking for you to be perfect. He's not expecting you to have it all together. Hear me clearly. You were created for this moment. You were created for this moment. You were born at the right time into the right family on the right side of the track and under the right circumstances for such a time as this. God knew uh, that a pandemic would occur in your lifetime. And he purposely impregnated, prepared you with gifts to operate effectively in a season like this. It was not a mistake. It was not a coincidence, but it's God's divine will for you to do what you do. You were predestined. You were predestined to be who you are. You are bigger. You are better. You are stronger and wiser than you think. So again, I ask you, can you see it? Can you see it? He wants to enlighten you. He wants you to understand who you are in the kingdom. Second thing that he wants, the magnifier wants you to see is your power. I call this, he wants to enlarge things for you. He wants to enlarge things for you. He wants you to see yourself in your new season, in your new walk, in your new place, in your new calling, in your enlarged territory. Touch a neighbor if you can. If you by yourself, just touch yourself and say, he's enlarging my territory. Yeah, God is enlarging your territory. First Corinthians 2 and 9, Paul tells us, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them who love him. Verses 10 and 12 of the same uh, chapter, uh, Paul tells us that it is the spirit of God that reveals these things to the believer. And those who are not in the spirit won't be able to understand it nor see the things that you see. That's exa exactly what Jesus just told the disciples. Uh, only the believer will understand, will be able to see and hear what I'm doing. Paul, again, reminds them of the same thing. Only by the spirit of God, uh, Will you be able to see, will folks be able to see or will be able to understand what he's doing? Can you see it is the question. Oh, it's bigger than you can imagine what God wants to do. He wants to enlarge your territory. You heard the song at the beginning of, of, of the uh, broadcast. Uh, Pastor Mike Jr. sings, it's going to be big. God is about to blow your mind. Listen, he wants to blow your mind. The spirit of God has taken you, is taking you to another dimension in the spirit realm. But you've got to be willing to go. You've got to be willing to go. Miracles are happening right now in your life. You can't explain the things that God is doing, how he keeps uh uh, blessing you, how he keeps delivering you, how he keeps making a way out of no way for you. It's only because of the grace and the mercy of God that these miracles are happening. Listen, don't try to make human sense out of it. Just walk in the spirit and have faith in God. 
and watch him do exceedingly, abundantly more than you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Yeah, there is power. There's power in us. There's there's power. There's potential. There's all of, of, of God's spirit that he has poured and breathed into our lives. And he wants us again uh, to walk in faith, trust in him. Oh, there's power. Old oh, folks used to say that's wonder working power. As a matter of fact, it's in the blood of the lamb. That same blood that covered you gives you power, 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 wonder working power. To be able to do incredible, miraculous things. Oh, if you believe in him, you have that power, power to overcome your fears and to meet uh, them face to face. You have power to run through the obstacles placed in your way. You have power to turn stumbling blocks into stepping stones. You have power to use your gift like nobody else can use it. Like David, you can take you some uh, five smooth stones and wrap them up in your little raggedy slingshot and, and let it slay giants. You have power to overcome the worst season of your life. Yeah, God wants you to see yourself enlightened and enlarged. But then third and finally, the magnifier wants you to allow the world to see him reflected in your life. I'll say that one more time. The magnifier wants you to allow the world to see him reflected in your life. I call this emulate. He wants you to emulate him. He wants you to show the world how big he is, how powerful, how mighty, how strong he is, and how focused and determined he is on making sure that all who are ready may have life and live more abundantly. And so he wants you to live your life as an example for others to see what it means to live for him. He wants you to become a magnifier. That's right. You are a magnifier. When people hear your words, see your actions, and view your deeds, they should make Jesus bigger. It should magnify him for all to see. According to science, according to science, uh, the, the, the strongest magnifying glass is a digital magnifying glass which magnifies things 70 times their actual size. The word magnify in the Bible is a, is a verb uh, in the Greek, which means to mega, to make big, like a megaphone, a mega uh, pixel, a megahertz, a uh, mega millions. Y'all can y'all know what that is, uh, to multiply by a million. This is the type of magnification we need in our world right now. We need to magnify him for the world to see. We need to tell our story, share our testimony. We need to tell of his goodness. We need to shout it from the mountaintop and in the valley low. We need to lift him up high for the world to see. For Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me, magnify him, praise him, bless him in the midst of this pandemic, magnify him in the midst of sorrow and heartaches, magnify him in the midst of sickness, magnify him in the midst of layoffs and furloughs and financial uh, calamity, magnify him in the midst of breakups and uh, separations and divorce, magnify him. In the midst of social injustices and political plum foolery, magnify him. Why? Because he is bigger than all of those things. None of the things that are going on in, 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 the, in the natural realm right now, in the earth, in the world, none of these things has caught him off guard. He is not surprised by anything that is going on. As a matter of fact, he knew 
what would happen. He, he knows what shall happen. We're, we're still waiting. We're, we're waiting on Tuesday, wondering what's going to happen. But can I tell you that it doesn't even matter what we do, because he's still going to be God. He's still going to sit on the throne. He's still going to keep bringing us through. He's still going to take care of us. Oh, over and over again, he has proven himself down through the years to deliver and to uh, provide for his people. And so all he wants us to do is to magnify him. Why? Because he is God. Bible says, be not dismayed, whatever. The tide. God will, songwriter rather says, be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Oh, I just wonder, can you see it? Oh, I can see God doing some things. I can see God bringing some people out. I can see God again delivering again those who are going through right now who, who can't even explain the problems and the things they're going through. But oh, I dare you. I dare you right now to trust God, to trust God. Trust God. Have faith. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you give up. Don't you allow Satan again to cause your blinders to come up. I want you to again open up your eyes, open up your ears. Believe God. When he tells you to step out, you step out. You may not have the money. You may not have uh, folks who you uh, need around you to do it. But I trust you, you got the most important resource of all. And that is our God on your side. Oh, if you can see it, let him enlighten you. Let him enlarge you. And then you emulate him by being the example in the earth that he's called you to be. Verse 16 and 17 of our text says, Jesus told the disciples, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears they hear. They see and hear what many who have gone on before you desired to see and hear. My brothers and sisters, you have been called out to magnify him. Bible says in Philippians 1 and 6, have confidence. That is, believe it, trust it, that our God, who has begun a good work in us, will complete it until Christ returns. Let's pray. God, our Father, we thank you again for your faithfulness. Thank you again for how you just keep on blessing us over and over again. God, we thank you that you are our magnifier, how you show us yourself and how you prove over and over again who you are. You are mighty. You are big. You are strong. You are, again, everything that we could imagine and everything that we need. So, God, I pray right now for the man, the woman, the boy or girl who's listening to me, who feels deep down, who, whose passion has been pushing them to say, you know what? I can do this. I, I, I should do this or I should do this. Uh, they, there's something in their, in their uh, des desire and in their heart that says, I want to do this. And they don't understand why they can't get away from that thing. But, God, I do. I know you placed it there. Help them again to go after the, the dreams and the visions and the aspirations that you placed in their lives. Help them uh, uh, to be enlightened. Help them to see themselves enlarged. But God, help them also to be the example that the world needs to see in such a time and season as this. God, I know right now there are great things that you have planned for us. And I ask you right now, God, to open up our eyes that we might see, open up our ears that we may hear. And then, God, give us the strength and the desire to go after and to do those things. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, my friends. I hope you've been helped by this word today. You are a magnifier. Go and magnify him.